Are you inconsistent with your aim? Do you always get insta headshot whenever you peek an angle? Well, chances are your movement sucks. So in this video, I'll go over the different movement techniques, movement mistakes you make, and also how to fix them so you don't get headshot anymore. Let's go. The first mistake I see 90% of you guys do is to peek either diagonally or while holding the W and S key. Now, it might not seem bad for you guys, but have you ever noticed how you get one shot a lot of time when peeking angles? Well, a lot of the one shots come from you peeking with multiple directional keys pressed at the same time. The reason this is bad is the way speed works in Valorant. Basically, when you move with two directional keys, your enemy will see you moving much, much slower than you actually are. This is because you simply aren't moving in one direction. You're adding another axis, which slows you down your total speed. Now, the way every pro peaks and the way every high ranked individual peaks is to mostly only use A and D to peak angles. Now, what do I mean by ADAD peak? Well, simply put, is that you only use A and D to peak the angle. This way, not only does it become easier to aim, as now you have more control over your horizontal movement, but it also makes you move faster relative to where your enemy is standing. Now, you might ask, what do you do when you're not in a position to move sideways to peak? Well, you have a couple of options. You can either, one, move forwards or backwards until you have the option to do one of these, or... You can change your position with your mouse so that you can AD AD peak. As much as I want to say that diagonal peaks are good, they really aren't in Valorant. Now, how do you practice these peaks? Well, firstly, I want you guys to go to graphic settings. Then I want you guys to go to stats and make sure you turn on shooting error and turn it to graph only. Then go into the practice range and simply practice your strafe timing on your peaks by doing irregular patterns to your strafes. Then make sure to time your shots so that you always have 100% orange on your shooting error graph. I don't want to see any blue there. No blue, only orange. Secondly, it's important to learn how to pre-aim properly, as this is often incorporated into your AD AD peak. Now, pre-aiming is when you aim at an opponent before even peeking him, meaning you line it up with your strafe. A good way to train this is to aim at an angle where an enemy usually stands, like a common angle. Then, without moving your crosser, go back to the wall to find the place where you have to aim to get a nice little headshot. Now, tip number two, and probably the most important movement technique you can learn in Valorant, is called meta strafing and or over aiming. Now, what is meta strafing? Well, simply put, meta strafing is when you do controlled random strafes with two bullet bursts while maintaining perfect first bullet accuracy. The way meta strafing works is that you should let the strafe do the work. What I mean by this is that you should let the strafe take you to your opponent's head, not your aim. Because what often happens with a lot of players is that you over aim. So your strafes take you to their head, but then you overcorrect with your aim and that makes you miss. Now, meta strafing is also really great when you're caught off guard by an enemy, as it is much better to be moving than to stand still and try to flick to the head. So if you're ever caught off guard, over flick, then let the strafe take you to their head. To practice meta strafing, go into practice range and over aim to the bots and then strafe to their location and stop when you're right on their head. Do this on both the left and the right sides. And you can also under flick and then strafe to them. Now, after this, you can also choose easy or medium bots and using a sheriff, over aim and under aim and then meta strafe to their head. Now, a question people always ask me is, should I counter strafe? Well, this really depends on if you've learned it and are using it already in Valorant. See, counter strafing doesn't really affect the time it takes to stop and be able to shoot accurately. It's at max a couple of frames. Now, the thing about counter strafing is that if you already have the habit of doing it, it's probably better to keep it like that because to some degree, it can give you a reference point and make it easier to strafe and shoot properly. So if you're already doing it, keep doing it. However, for the people who haven't learned it yet, it's really up to you if you want to learn it or not. I would argue that it really isn't any point in learning it, but if it helps you stay consistent, just do it. Now, to counter strafe, I want you to strafe in one direction, then press the opposite movement button. If you want to practice counter strafing, go into the range and put on shooting error and practice your counter strafe timings by shooting one shot and making sure it's completely accurate. You don't want any blue on the graph. Now, how would it be a movement video without mentioning some of the different skill jumps and silent jobs you can do throughout the different maps? So let's go through the most important so that no weird ass niche jump that only works one out of 150 rounds actually is in this video. So firstly, let's go to Scent, where I know a lot of you guys probably know that you can get on top of these boxes. But do you actually know how to do it? Well, if not, let me show you. Aim the edge of this box with this door, then aim for this dark spot, and then jump, and right after jumping, hold crouch plus the A and W key. Then, when you are at your highest point of your jump, let go of crouch and only hold D. It's gonna take a couple of tries, but trust me, it actually works. I've done it before. As for the second jump, aim at this rift, then for this spot on the wall, and then all you have to do is do the same thing you did at the first jump. Secondly, if you want a silent drop from Dish on Fracture, get close to this wall thingy right here, and then I want you to run full speed just off the edge, then use your mouse to strafe yourself onto this box while holding the shift key, 
so you don't make any walking sound then all you have to do is simply drop down and there you go very nice now if you want to get on top of plateau and haven seaside without having control of any of backside you can get into this corner on plateau then do the same thing as the ascent jump however here i want you to spam crouch at the peak of your jump this jump is good to catch a rat off guard backside or just to simply surprise the enemy ct lastly just to mention it if you really want a silent jump from the ropes on fracture or icebox r.i.p icebox bro <laughs> all you have to do is simply jump then hold shift while pressing f while you enter the zip line it's that simple but people seem to overcomplicate this so much it's a very simple mechanic good job now a lot of you guys probably love to crouch whether that be to crouch spray or to hold an angle crouch but when should you actually crouch well usually crouching is used to throw off your cross replacement therefore it is really useful in the higher ranks not to say that it isn't useful in the lower ranks. Don't worry, don't worry. The times you want to crouch are as following. Firstly, if you're holding an angle where you know an enemy will try to pre-fire you, like a common angle, crouching at the angle can actually give you an advantage as they will have PM'd at head level, which will usually cause them to miss, which makes you be able to get out the first shot. Very nice. Secondly, if you're going to peek into an angle where you know someone is camping at a very close distance, and here I'm talking like under 10 meters, then you can actually crouch into the angle. This usually means that they'll miss because they will pre-aim at your head. But since you're crouching, you're lower, which means that they're going to miss. Very nice. However, remember that I'm not talking about blob peeking into the angle, holding crouch and then peeking into the angle. I'm talking about running up, then crouching just before they can see you. This means that you're not going to lose as much speed and therefore you won't look like a snail trying to run up to somebody camping in angle. Lastly, and probably the most situational is when you're at a distance of over 40 meters, you can actually crouch at this distance to give you a little bit more accuracy to try to negate the negative effects from first bullet inaccuracy. However, this is very niche and it's usually better to just do a tap, strafe, tap pattern. But sometimes it does work, don't get me wrong. Lastly, to quickly go over peeking, you're probably just as confused as I was a couple of months ago. So, when should you wide swing and when should you jiggle peek? Well, it's actually really simple. I like to go by this rule when I'm peeking between jiggle peek and a wide swing. So, naturally an enemy is usually more likely by human nature to hold an angle kind of wide this usually means that if you have the option to jiggle peek someone almost always choose this as this is by far the most safe and most accurate way of dealing with gunfights however you should wide swing when you won know that an enemy is standing very close to a wall this stems from something called angle advantage which will make you appear to be running twice as fast as sonic and two when you condition the enemy to hold a tight cross replacement you can do this by jiggling a couple of times quickly then finally committing to a wide swing. This is usually done by Poppin. You've probably seen the Poppin swing a million times, but this is actually really effective to win a begun fight. Now, to end this off, remember that learning movement takes time and effort. So please don't be discouraged if you don't learn it perfectly within the first three days. I believe anybody here can do it. So if you're watching this right now thinking you can't, you can do it definitely. Don't worry, it's very easy. Hopefully this helped you guys, because if it did, please consider dropping a sub and maybe even a like, as this really helps me out a ton. Thank you guys. Stay safe.